Dr. Jeff DIY here. While replacing the timing belt on my 96 Ranger, I damaged the crankshaft threads with the pulley removal tool. Uh-oh, the bolt is crooked and won't go in. Oh man, those threads are bad. I'm gonna show you how I used a thread tap and chaser to get it oh, fixed. Yeah. So here's what happened. I foolishly let the tip of the pry bolt on the puller tool press straight into the threads of the crankshaft. I should have used a spacer and lined it up with the red circles as shown. So how the heck am I gonna fix this? Step one, pour a cold one. Man, I can't believe I did that. How dumb. Step two, oh well, I'll figure it out. I can try cleaning the threads with a chaser. And if that doesn't work, I'll use a thread tap. Step three, it'll be okay. So how do you know what size chaser or tap to use? Use a caliper and thread pitch gauge to measure your bolt. I'm using this bolt for an example. Is this a 10 millimeter bolt? Nope. Bolts are measured by diameter, thread pitch or TPI, and length. Thread pitch is for metric bolts, and it's literally the distance between two crests. For standard bolts, you can count the crests in a one inch span to get the threads per inch. So this bolt is M8 diameter by 1.25, by 53. Here's my thread chaser setup. A chaser is a gentler tool designed to clean the threads. I used some grease because some people said that grease would trap crud better and make it easier to remove it. Now, I'm showing this in real time, which may make the flow of the video slow, but I'm trying to show how it's important to be slow and gentle when doing this. I didn't want to damage the threads more and then have to drill them out and start all over with a time cert or something like that. Go to the point of resistance and then back off. Clean the chaser if needed and repeat. And power. I was able to go further each time. Then I used a ratchet for just a little more torque. My hand very close to it so not getting much leverage. Like it's okay, I think I'll work it in. Second time with the ratchet, the chaser yeah. went all the way in. Okay. It's, I think it's past the bad spot now because I've got it way in there. So now I should back off. I could get the chaser in by hand as well. but I couldn't get the bolt to go in. After this, I inspected it a little more closely and I noticed a hanging thread. So I decided to pry it off to try to get a better, cleaner surface area of the threads. Whoop, there it goes. Oh, I think I just broke it off. Now you can see the damage is at about 12 o'clock. So my situation calls for more than just a chaser, so I'm gonna use a tap. First, I'm going to clean the bolt. A thread file would have been better, but I didn't have one of my own at the time. So I used some oil and I was very gentle with the dye and repeated the process a few times back and forth, going really slowly. Here it sped up. Ultimately, the bolt had no resistance. Before using the tap, I cleaned out the threads. And before I put the tap in, I had put some drilling oil on, which I did off camera. Since this tap is a stronger tool capable of creating new threads, it was really important to not cross thread it. I spent a lot of time lining it up and getting it started. This is kind of boring footage, but I wanted to demonstrate that you should really be patient doing this. and I backed it off when I felt resistance. Oh. Since it got started without cross-threading, I'm using a circular hand socket now to apply just a little more torque. It's still pretty gentle. I went to resistance, then backed off. And I started getting some metal chips, as you can see here in the circle. Now that the tap is started pretty well with no cross-threading, I'm gonna use a socket for a little more leverage. Socket. And then 
I just go slow. See how it's going in really easy. And I'll speed it up a little bit here. And then when I got to some resistance, I stopped and backed off. There. And I repeated this process a few down. times. Before I try the bolt, I cleaned out the crankshaft threads and it turned out there was some liquid hiding in there, which made some rusty nastiness. So I repeated this process a few times to get it totally dry and clean. Once I reassemble the crankshaft pulley, I'll wipe off the anti-seize here and use some thread locker, but this is insurance against binding for now. Let's see if it worked. Oh yeah. Yeah! Note there's some play when the bolt is only partway screwed in. I did lose some thread depth during the whole process, but when the bolt is in all the way, it felt pretty solid. Loving it. Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to help out the channel, please consider subscribing. This is Dr. Jeff DIY. I'll see you the next time something breaks.